Hello again, welcome to another episode of the Uranium Market Minute. Today is Tuesday, May 3rd, and this is episode number 114. My name is Justin Hewn. I am your host and the founder and publisher of the Uranium Insider Pro newsletter, the only investing newsletter that focuses solely on uranium and publishes on a regular monthly basis. As always, nothing that you see or hear in this podcast is intended to be investing advice. I'm not your financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Please always do your own due diligence when it comes to investing and always take responsibility for your own choices. All right. Um, nice to see a little bit of a rebound in the sector here. Uh, I did not do a Market Minute podcast yesterday as I was fully focused on getting the Uranium Insider Pro newsletter out this morning. That went out about an hour before the market opened this morning. Um, that was 30 plus pages on uh, macro fundamental developments over the past 30 days, as well as some information on the companies that we hold on our focus list. Um, so if you are a member and for whatever reason you did not get the notification in your email, you can log into the members area of our website and download uh, this month's newsletter there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go through the daily scoreboard. Uh, not a whole lot happening there. Pretty quiet across the sector. I'm going to run through the charts, show you a couple of things that I'm seeing there, and then I want to discuss and reiterate some elements of um, the Russian invasion of Ukraine and how that's affecting the markets in terms of shipments, in terms of purchasing by the utilities, et cetera. So that will be the mailbag section. So before we do that, let's go ahead and jump into the daily scoreboard here. The spot price of uranium slightly up, 53.88 a pound mid markets, but absolutely quiet. So there's a little bit of activity in the spot market. However, utilities are generally speaking very, very quiet right now, with an exception of uh, looking to secure conversion and enrichment. These are elements that are further up the full cycle, the fuel cycle, and utilities will seek out uh, fulfillment of their fuel needs there first because obviously they can get that fuel faster. And of course, uh, you know, Russia controls a very substantial minority of global capa uh, capacity for conversion and enrichment. But either way, we are seeing some small movements up in the spot price of uranium after that month end smash that we saw the last trading week of April. Uh, yesterday, SPUT raised no new capital, did not buy any additional pounds. They now have a cash position down to 22.6 million. They're unlikely to spend any more money out of that uh, cash position, waiting for them to get back up to a premium to NAV. And that certainly did not happen today. Uh, they closed yesterday at a discount to NAV minus 4.58%. They likely traded down a little bit further uh, north between, uh, let's say, 5 and 6% discount to NAV after today. SPUT actually traded down today on very low volume while the rest of the sector performed quite well. Interesting. The sector equity ETFs, URA and URNM, both reported no change in outstanding shares. I think that it also is still quite noteworthy to mention and reiterate that we're not seeing meaningful redemptions here coming from the ETFs. So the selling we've seen across the sector over the past few weeks is not and did not come from the ETFs. That is quite curious, is it not? Uh, yesterday, we had a pretty sharp sell-off again in the morning hours of trading. However, the sector did rebound with most of the sector printing pretty obvious reversal candles on the daily charts. And on that note, why don't we go ahead and look at the charts for the sector. URA up 1.83% on the day. However, the volume was negligible. We did see a bit of selling down from the highs on the day. Uh, still overall green across most of the sector with a couple of stocks within the sector making very strong rebounds. And across the sector, we did see, like I mentioned, this very obvious reversal hammer printed, this reversal candle yesterday. Uh, but still, I want to see volumes come in to confirm this. This is far, far too early to say that we are out of the woods here or well into our, our next leg up. We need to see volume to confirm that. So very likely we could trade back down or potentially chop sideways as we move towards a retest potentially of this lower trend line within this long-term bullish accumulation cylinder. Like I mentioned, the Sprott Fiscal Uranium Trust actually perfectly flat on the day, traded up, sold back down. Um, I don't think they got close to being at the 1% premium to NAV, so they likely did not raise any new uh, cash today. However, this chart is severely oversold on the MACD, especially RSI and oversold territory. So this is due for a bounce here. I think it's a matter of time before we see new capital come into this. 
and uh, get them back up to that greater than 1% premium to NAV so they can raise some more money and add to that buying pressure in the spot market. For now, we chop sideways. So it seems within this uh, $1 range on the spot fiscal rate interest between that 16 and $17 mark, uh, Canadian dollar here. Let's take a look at Cameco. Cameco also traded up today over 1%, but did sell off substantially of the highs on the day. Also printed a nice reversal hammer candle yesterday. Uh, pretty oversold on the MACD. The whole sector looks like it's in mostly oversold territory and due for a correction to the upside. Okay, so mailbag section. Um, I continue to have questions come in about uh, Russian sanctions and whether or not I believe that they're actually going to be sanctions coming from the US, coming from the EU. Um, well, really my answer for that, uh, generally speaking, is I don't think it really matters um, whether or not we actually see official sanctions, but gun to my head, I think that we do see official sanctions. I think that that is high likelihood outcome for both the US and the EU because this conflict in the Ukraine and the invasion by Russia is not slowing down. And this is one, uh, one, one tool in the toolbox for the West to uh, fight against this particular situation without actually coming to arms against Russia and escalating into, God forbid, some sort of nuclear conflict. So this is what the West is using as their primary armament against Russia is sanctions or uh, you know financial incursions. Uh, and I do believe that sanctions are um, I would say there's a, a, a positive chance of that happening. But what are we seeing already? We are seeing something that we're calling self-sanctioning. We're seeing the utilities voluntarily seek out um, further contracts going forward out into the future from non-Russian entities. Now, we are very unlikely to see new contracts be signed by US or European nuclear utilities from Russia even though as of yet, we have yet to actually see official sanctions come from either the US or the EU. So um, really those sanctions don't really matter whether or not they happen because what we're seeing now is this self-sanctioning. Now we, we live in a world uh, now of ESG, environmental, social and governance world where Western companies are judged by large asset manager, managers about their corporate morality. Okay, so, you know, how can you, how can any entity at this point be purchasing voluntarily from Russia when we're seeing what's going on over there? Uh, short answer, you can't, you can't, this is inexcusable. And so uh, for the utilities, they have minimal options. So we're likely to see continued contracting with Cameco um, as we're seeing right now, we're seeing conversion and UF6 enrichment and EUP be bought up by Western utilities. Uh, in decent volumes with very big price spikes. We saw huge price spikes for the month, month, month of April in uh, enrichment in long-term SWU. We saw a big price jump in March for conversion. And uh, this is going to portend to higher prices for U308 down the line and for UF6. And that's already started. So we're kind of in that liminal space right now where um, we've had a couple of things. We've had the, the SPUT NYSE listing application be rejected by the SEC. Um, so I think that the markets are trying to figure out what to do about that. And we're seeing the utilities sort of sit back right now, drawing down their inventories as, as we've seen, um, watching the situation see, is this for real? Okay. So this is really what's going on with the, with the utilities in terms of larger volumes of term contracting, which we're yet to see. We saw a big spike in the first month, first six weeks of the year, but term contracting will slow down as well. So the utilities are sort of sitting back drawing down some inventories and just kind of think, see, looking to see, A, is this spot thing for real, which I don't know how they can believe that it isn't. Uh, and I, I don't think utilities have any idea about how aggressive the financial players can get with this type of situation. And B, is this situation with Russia going to pass? So we're, it's possible that we'll see a more quiet market in terms of utility buying going forward. What does that mean for this investment? Well, it doesn't necessarily mean a lot. It really hinges on what the financial players plan to do in the short to mid term. And we have yet to see that volume come back into um, either the ETFs or SPUT in particular with the spot price purchasing. Um, we believe that there are plenty of financial players that are well aware of this thesis and could very well come in during that time frame. And of course, we don't bet on the short term to begin with. So the fundamentals for the mid and long term are beyond phenomenal. And that's what we're positioned for. So this situation in Russia is unlikely to reverse. 
Um, it's unlikely that we'll see uh, the markets go back to how they were in terms of commodities markets back in you know December, January, let's say. And um, it's, it's highly likely that we're going to see this play out in much, much higher prices for uranium. Um, it's even possible that we could see a bifurcation in the markets going forward. Um, I don't know how soon that could happen, but if the situation sticks, it's pretty reasonable to think that there are certain entities that um, might not necessarily care about the ramifications of purchasing from Russia. Maybe that's India, maybe that's China, maybe that's other entities in the East. And the Russian production of U-308, which is minimal, but of conversion and enrichment, uh, we're likely to see that capacity decline due to lack of demand. And whatever they do produce will be sold uh, into the East. Now, will there be ramifications and secondary sanctions going towards China? You know that China is actually concerned about this. Um, you know, the, the US and the EU are huge customers of basically everything coming from China. So secondary sanctions against China for any involvement with Russia could happen. It's a very sensitive situation, but we're also going to see Western demand for nuclear increase and uh, in, the, in the demand for the fuel increase due to the capacity of nuclear generation increasing in the West and less capacity for uh, in, uh, conversion and enrichment overall. So that's going to mean higher prices. Everything is pointing towards higher prices, bifurcation or not. And that's where we're that's where we're at right now. And all of these elements of the fuel cycle in, in this trade and this investment in general move very, very slowly, especially if you <laughs> compare those to the movements of the spot price, excuse me, of the stocks. Um, it seems like total portfolio percentage moves from five to 10% on a daily basis in either direction is becoming the norm. It's unbelievably volatile. So know that going forward, we're going to see a volatile equities market, even though the fundamentals of this are phenomenal and the long term looks extremely, extremely bright for nuclear. Um, short term is anyone's guess. So we're going to have to see if we see those volumes come back in this. But um, considering the prolonged discount to the net asset value, I think that um, very soon we're going to see volumes come back in, see sput trade back up to a premium. Uh, and so far since August, since their ATM went live of last year, um, every time they've been at a substantial discount to NAV for a couple of weeks or longer, that has marked a bottom in the sector and we have traded back up. And I do, I think that's going to happen again. Absolutely. It's just a matter of time. All right. Thanks for listening. Um, I will see you again tomorrow. Cheers.